Greetings everyone and welcome back to Thea the Awakening. We're on day four, midday as it happens, and uh, our people are kind of maybe in a bit of trouble. Uh, it's been a turbulent couple of turns, I can tell you that for nothing. Right, well, I'm going to use, oh, well, no. We're going to use four movement out of our five so that we've got a reserve of one. So that we can immediately camp. I just wanted to see if maybe we could get into anything nearby. No. We're going to camp here. Now, when you camp, you effectively make a mini um, settlement. All you can do is gather resources from around yourself. You can't craft. You can't construct buildings. However, being... Oh, well, there's nothing to gather. But being in a camp will slightly give us an advantage on healing. Now... This isn't going to make any difference to whether or not Izzy survives. The way that uh, healing works, the, the, the ins and outs of it, are at the end of the turn, the first thing that happens is it checks, it rolls like a, a chance for every person who is heavily wounded to die. Now, if you have a medic in the party, then their skill will reduce the percentage chance of death occurring. If you have, if they survive, then they will heal. They'll only heal if they've got fuel and food, I believe. Food might not actually be necessary, but I, I should imagine it slows their healing down if they don't have it. If they are in a tent, if they're camping in a tent or they are in the settlement, they'll get a healing boost. And if their diet is particularly good, uh, we, we definitely don't want to be burning that. Uh, if their diet is particularly good, then they may he heal a little bit faster. But otherwise, it doesn't make much of a difference. I'm going to let you eat all of that. It's fine. Uh, so, I think it may be time for us to find out. We've made some bigost down here. We have also gathered some more stuff. Let's actually go and check out in Dapadel. See how things are going. Let's find out how are things going here in Dapadel. Share with me your secrets. Hopefully, everything is going well. Uh, things do seem to be generally okay. Uh, I'm going to allow you to continue to accrue. We've got 19 vegetables right now, 22 wood. I'm going to turn off eating vegetables and eating meat because at this point we produce more bigost every turn than we consume. And so we'll get the most bigost out of it. And then when our expedition comes back, we can give them a little bit more. Fingers crossed. Antos. Oh, we have survived. Okay, the lack of that little heart down there means that they have crossed the threshold where it is no longer dangerous for them. Ah, oh, my goodness. I was deeply concerned. Let's have a look at Izzy, shall we? Let's go to the equipment screen. Place easiest for us. All right, we've got five wounds remaining. Wounds are basically a measure of how much health until you're at full health. And we heal a certain amount of wounds per turn based on our healing. Now... I'm not actually sure if having a um, a medic with you in your group increases healing at all. Wow, we haven't got much many turns. I'm gonna need to gather some f some wood soon. Got some fruit down there though. We can go and pick some of that up, perhaps. Uh, okay, just gonna pass a turn. Now, making food does not give you any research points, but making almost anything else will. It is getting to night. That means enemies are going to become significantly more aggressive. We want to be back before nightfall, but at 200% difficulty, I'm going to say it's not strictly necessary, but certainly if you are playing at the highest difficulty level, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not playing at the highest difficulty, you do need to basically hide through the night. Uh, it can be really rough. Uh, right, let's go and you say hello. The her, like Theodore spoke of. He sits on a rock and stares at you with his large yellow eyes. Which are black what in the picture. You, you looking for trouble? Because I could get you some. Uh, he clenches his tiny fists at you. Uh, no trouble, little fella. Just want to talk. Now, we could go straight into the social battle. Uh, but this is a good illustration of how sometimes just picking options, not ones necessarily attached to a skill, can improve things. Little. Who are you calling little, you overgrown pile of softy fish bags, you? How rude. The creature huffs and puffs at you, shaking its fists violently. Uh, all, all right. Our apologies, sir. Little is a mark of honour in our village, you know. 
like we say, Hey there, village elder, you're very little today. Or calm yourself, creature, before we are forced to harm you. Give us some gold and we'll leave you be. No, we'll go with this one. Sir, don't you see that I am a woman? <laughs> but a compliment, you say? Well, I suppose being little is way better than being big. So you're kind of clever to call each other little, even though you're clearly vertically challenged. So, what's your business here? And there we go. We're down to a one skull challenge. I, I, the narrator had been calling her a him all this time, and Theodore told us to go and get this stuff from him. You've all set us up. Uh, well, we were told you have some gold, and we really need it. A fella called Theodore said you may be able to help out. Right, we're going to have a social challenge with two holics and one craze of the bee. Now, this is actually going to illustrate the, the whole thing with the, the witch and the wolves. Uh, offense will be our speech. Defense will be our will. So a high will is particularly good. First action and counter offense are our beauty. So we can be particularly beautiful and somehow bolster the arguments of our allies and cause their arguments to land first. Or we can use counter offense to strip away a direct card out of their cards yet to be played. Counter tactic and support ally are our intelligence. Shield ally is our knowledge of folklore and confuse our enemies is our magic. Uh, clear mind in social tactical challenges, card dealing clear mind damage is placed in front of the last card. If it was an enemy card, it will also deal half of its clear mind damage. Uh, poison is fainting and uh, using find weakness is our life leech. Begin combat. Okay, who goes first? We go first. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, right then. Hmm. None of our pe people in the tactics deck are particularly beautiful. I'm sorry, obsi Obsidia? Oops. Uh, that should be... Oh, no, it is meant to be obs uh, Obsidia. Obsidia missed. Um, at least that's 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 what Patron reported to me when it gave me the list of, of people who were supporting at the at the ferret uh, treats tier. I apologize if it's if it's wrong. I will double check though. Uh, we could use counter tactic. We'd get rid of that, but that could be the beer. We don't want to get rid of them. All right then. I'm gonna get Swizzle down. Go, go Swizzle. And they have played a holic. Two holics in a row. Wow, that was not great for us. <sighs> well, they do four damage, poison damage, at that. Well, we're not going to use counterattack. There's no point. What I could do, however, is rise your potential damage to the point that you're going to be able to take out the first holic yourself. There we go. And then we will play you down in order of your health. Now, the reason why I do that is this holic does eight damage a turn. This one does nine damage a turn. We want to kill this one first. That one gone. This one will then have to apply its eight damage to either, either Russell or Swizzle. Now, ideally, it'll be Russell. It doesn't really matter. We're going to win no matter what at this stage. However, if that happens, let's just assume that Russell had, um, let's say, seven health, and Sarah was behind them. Unless you can do blunt damage, you cannot trample. So overkilling someone just means that you kill them, and then your any excess damage is lost. So by putting weak people behind um, Russell, or well. Actually, it might have even been better to have done it the other way. But all I was going to say is that Russell would be able to survive no matter how much damage he did. But in actual fact, thinking about it, it would have been better to put Russell down because Russell does less damage. Uh, sorry, yeah, Sarah does less damage than Russell. So by keeping Russell alive for one more turn, we would have been able to do a little bit more damage. It doesn't really matter here, though. I very much doubt they're even going to play that card because it can't do anything. It has no means to actually fight. Ah... Blah, 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 blah. Fantastic. What what a rousing debate this is. Oh, how could they counter argument that? That what a fantastic all rebuttal. Right, all right. Theodore is clearly up to his old tricks. Sending you here for his gold 
Here you go, and tell him to come himself next time. Very well. We got a bonus for that. Izzy has gotten the blessing of speech craft. craft. A blessing of speech adds five speech for a set number of turns. So we've got 15 turns worth of having extra speech. Obsidian Mist and Izzy have both got that. Marvellous. And a research point. And a level up point. Double marvellous, I must say. Now we can get some string here. That might not be a bad move. Hmm. How much turns have you got? I can't get up there in one turn, but I can have you camp out here. Sure, okay. I would definitely like to get this if I can. Let's get everyone out there. Mm. Actually, I absolutely want to get that string. The wood is also nice. We'll be camped here for two turns if we do this. Uh, yeah, because we'll get six. Six wood. This will give us a decent amount of string, and string will be useful in crafting clothing. So I'm going to pass that turn. A pigeon flies to your village with a note attached. Oh, okay. It reads, Dear residents of the lovely settlement, if you will, please visit my humble abode placed not so far from your lovely home. It is very nice. I am a blacksmith of dwarven tradition, and I have an offering for you, kind people. Yes. There is a small map drawn in strange purple glowing ink. Very well. All right. It may be interesting and worth checking out. I will make this journey. I will indeed. All right. Got some more bigost being made. How much bigost have we got now? Uh, 28. That's not bad. Uh, we gathered six string and gathered more vegetables and wood. We're immediately going to pass the next... Well, actually, we can break camp, head up onto the hill... Re-establish camp. Now, the, the, the downside there is we're not going to get the, the wood. Um, because I, I wasted that a little bit. Uh, so get the wood now. And then... Hmm, actually, no. We need to get some extra food is the higher priority here. Got enough wood to make it. Uh, actually, no. The wood is the, the least. Uh, okay. We'll swap them around. We'll get one, two in here, and then we'll get 14. Uh, enough fruit for 14 meals on the following turn, so that should be fine. Okay, we're going to pass a turn there. An old dwarf passes by your village, stopping only for a drink and a chat if you're willing. Very well. Sure, have a drink with him. Oh, what? No, rob him blind! Or, yeah, share a drink and then kill him and take his stuff. So undapper. We can't do that in a place called Dapper Dell. You share a drink and some stories. As thanks, the dwarf tells you of an old mine he knows. What? He the location on your map. Afterwards, he decides to stay with you. What? And live out his last days helping you. What? That is so ridiculously good. I have never had that happen. That a dwarf just decides, yeah, you know what, I'm going to live with you guys. I've, I've managed to attract them, making like my smithy out of gold, but I've never, not once, gotten a dwarf to just join us. Dwarves are very powerful units. Oh my good lord. He marks a route for a mithril mine. Uh. Game. Game, why are you being so kind to me? You're going to upset me, aren't you? You're going to do something truly diabolical shortly. Mm. And with that, we got... A level. I really cannot overstate how ridiculously good that was. <sighs> okay, so, Voyager, our people's abilities have improved. Sara and, and Svizzle have both gotten healthier. Russell has gotten better at gathering as if they needed that. Izzy is more dexterous, quite a lot more dexterous actually, and Obsidian Mist is better at crafting. Very good. And our dwarf also got in on the level up. Um, Manuvarana, uh, Ribsung, and the dwarf smith all gain some health. Jason gains a little bit of shielding. That's just naturally good body armor. And Kenneth is much more perceptive. Wow. Genuinely amazing. Uh, right, we got some wood. Good. All right, let's uh, quickly to uh, switch over from food to fruit, I would say. Mana supplies. Got enough food for one more turn. So, 
we don't want to be uh, dilly dallying, really, do we? Uh, if I leave you guys there, actually, you're going to get that in one turn, no matter what. You're now so good, you can gather by yourself. Every single turn, you gather enough by yourself. That is actually kind of amazing. Yep, so, okay, you can sit there for a little bit and just gather me some things, because Sarah is now that much better. Got a level 7 gatherer. That is awesome. Okay, well, I think it's time that we go and check out our new Dwarven Smith. Oh, yes, indeed. Right, Dwarf Smith, let's see. You're going to be Oxhood. There we are. Welcome to the colony, Oxhood. I don't have any equipment to give you, but you know what? You don't need any, because you're a dwarf. You've got 22 natural armor. You've got 9 natural crafting, 30 natural damage, 28 strength. You can carry 1,400 weight units. You're also quite willful. You're also poisonous. You're also not a bad guy. Just, what the... I hope that you're starting to see why I was kind of bowled over by that luck. That is ridiculously good. All right, then. Well, given that, I feel that maybe we could, perhaps, if we would like to, make some clothes. So, uh, hmm. We could make a fur coat, fur leather and spider silk. Uh, it'll give us three armor. If I want instead, I can make a silk tunic. Three armor, it's more or less the same thing. Sometimes it's not always though. Uh, I could make uh, leather there, get four armor, regular leather, three. Doesn't really give us much. If I use the silk down here instead and went for this up top, I could get a reptile vest, four armor once again, three armor, exactly the same. If I wanted, of these, this is the least um, high tier, then it's this, then it's the the um, reptile leather. Go for a fur coat, give us four armor. Uh, if I pop that up there. Could I get four armor there, or I could just double her up, and then we get one extra shielding with a, with a reptile vest like that. Three armor. Three armor and one dexterity for a leather shirt. Not bad. I want something like this, a plain shirt, three armor. Yeah, it's not going to really give us much there, is it? Um... Right, what we can use is we can use our Malachite as a, as a gem, as the secondary material. That will just give us three armor, though. It doesn't really give us much in the way of anything. Uh, they, these will all be changing the uh, equipment weights, though. Uh, we could go with this and just make two reptile vests for four armor each. Hmm. That isn't too bad. It would weigh 20 units, which is very light. Give us 7 research points. Take 148 crafting to do. If I did this, it would give us 10 research points. It's a little bit heavier. Because of the materials we're using. 9 research points. Much lighter, because it's spider silk, of course. Uh... No, I think we're going to be going with just full Reptile Vest for the extra shielding. We've only got a 20% tw uh, minus crafting skill level. Which is fine. Let's uh, go ahead and set this up. We'll get 7 research points for this. 148 points required. You can get to work on that. So we've only got 11% chance of making bad clothes here. Make as many of those as you can, which is going to be 2. It's going to take 4 turns in total to make all of them. We'll get one after the first first go. And then I'm going to pop that up at the top so that once you're done with that, you'll drop down to the Bigos and you'll just auto-craft a bunch of them. Right, pass the turn. Ooh, an encounter. You discover a small pond near your village and you send out a party to check it out. When you get there, it looks normal, but it seems very quiet. Almost too quiet. The pond remains still and uneventful. Get some water and fish for the village or... It's just too weird, just leave. No, we're gonna try and get some some fish and water. Uh, there we are. There's a lot of things that, that could have turned into. We got 37 seaweed, which is actually not bad. All right, it is night time now. 
Uh, let's see what went on over here. We got 14 fruit. Hooray! We also got a bunch of vegetables. Now, I could just leave the voyagers there for a little bit, just so that they're prepared. Mm. Yeah, let them grab a little bit more. Ooh, got a bunch of bees. And an encounter. <clears throat> We come across the skeletal remains of an ancient dragon, clearly fallen many decades ago, as the bones are covered in moss, vine, and partly submerged in the ground. If it wasn't for Lady Ladder's luck today, you would have likely missed it. Dragons are really, like, I can't stress, like, the, the most likely dragon encounter you're ever going to find starts at so many skulls that it, it no longer counts them as just skulls. They start glowing. But, collect the bones, but, but, but on Morena's wits, be careful. You go into the dragon's belly to search for the usable bones because dragon bones are one of the highest tiers. But you're surprised by some armor clad dwarves in your way. Halt, thieving maggots, these here bones are ours. Uh, run away. We're not going to play with dwarves. We just got a dwarf. They would have crushed us. Uh, there's some enemies just outside our hall. We've just made a bunch of bigos. And we have made our first leather item. And... Hmm, we should be making a second one shortly. But let's go ahead and equip. And since you just made it, I feel you deserve it. There you go. You've got even more armor now. And one shielding to boot. I'll pass another turn. They will almost certainly attack us at night. Five crazed bees. Problem with bees, they are stupendously dangerous. Now, normally I would say don't do any auto battles. Here I would say do it. The reason why I feel that you should is that I have found that enemies that do piercing are easier to defeat through auto resolve than not. Also, skeletons. Um, easy to defeat in a regular battle. Auto-resolve will get you killed quite often. But we're going to stick to always fight. Player's turn and our dwarf is over here. Happiest of days. Wondrous. Most wondrous of days. Go forth, Oxid. Be glorious. You're going to get stabbed. Just understand. It's going to be a bit of stabbing going on. That one didn't. Stab because it doesn't do nearly enough damage. All right, I need to shield Oxherd from the next couple of bees that are gonna get played. Cause it's gonna it's gonna suck. That that sucked, for example. Um, now none of them have got a lot of health, which is great. But you're gonna take a whole wallop of damage first. I'm gonna use counter tactic to get one of the crazed bees out of the way because it can still use its uh, 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 piercing attack no matter what. Wish I had Jason a little bit earlier in the queue, actually, at this point. Uh, right, you're going to stab Jason, but that's fine. And a riff song. Now, they are going to do a bit of damage to you, but you should be okay, Oxford. They'll take you down a bit of health, but... There we go. And now you're going to take out two, and then we'll take out the last one. There we are. Not awful. And then you're like, and for good riddance! Bloody bees. Ten wounds, but isn't at low health. We got seaweed fruitcake. <laughs> and two amber as well. Marvellous. Seaweed fruitcake is made from seaweed and fruit. There we are. It is time for the Night of the Goat. A feast in honour and reverence of the ancestors and forefathers. The so-called Ziadi. Great. Begin the celebrations. You set a table with food and drink. Set bonfires in a circle. And begin festivities. But this night that Ziadi actually appear before you. One, an elder bearded man, speaks with a heavy, coarse voice. You have done us proud, grandchildren. Now we shall cleanse you of any curses you carry. And if your souls are ever burdened by the filth of dark magic, come to a city we once called home and seek us out. And if you prove yourselves worthy, you may be cleansed once more. The Ziadi all nod in agreement, then disappear. Wonderful. If we're ever cursed, we shall seek out the city. And Rifsung has gained a permanent bonus to folklore from this encounter. Excellent, Rifsung. You come across an abandoned tower. 
How? Because we were in a camp and we weren't moving. And when you peek inside, you see it stands empty, but for a series of wooden chests scattered on the floor. You also notice a worrying amount of humanoid bones laid on the floor. <sighs> no, we're going to be clever about this. Mysterious amount of chest, mysterious amount of dead people, you know. We're gaining XP either way. Now, on the topic of gaining EXP, the game world is progressing at all times. There are two ways it progresses. Uh, one, the further out from your settlement you go, so the deeper into the dark, the more high-level nests you find, which produce high-level monsters. And once they, once you find them, they start just pumping them out and they will slowly wander to areas where they might not normally have been. So you can uh, force the world to progress quickly that way. The other one is just purely time. The more time that passes, the more the world progresses and the harder all new spawning hypes, because they will pop up over time just in, in areas that you've previously been. However, if you kill hives, you slow the progress slightly. You'll never stop it, but you can give yourself a little bit more time. Uh, you got one more turn. That's excellent. And we're going to last. Hmm, should we make a move? Let's have a look. How much resources have you got? What's, what's your inventory like? You're allowed to eat that, so I don't know why. Oh, we only got five there. Inventory. Oh. Oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. Very bad. My dumb, in fact. My super dumb. So sorry. Uh, really, you all? Ah, no. Not over there. That was super my bad. Right. You're going to be without food, but it's only for one turn. Right, pass the turn. I'm going to have them l go through the night, I think. So we have finished the second tunic, and now you're going to be working there and making a lot of equipment. Who should get this? Um... Is it better than the army you've got? No, the army you've got is actually a better quality. Because this is bad quality. Ah, oh, drag. I'm actually going to recycle that then, given this. Uh, go to arms and armor. Drop here to dismantle. We'll get some of the leather back. Rather than have bad quality stuff. Right, okay. So how much Bigos did we make? Uh, we made... Doesn't actually tell us. Oh, it would have actually put a number there. Perhaps we just didn't have that much left over. But we did manage to get through uh, the night a little bit, which is awesome. Now then, with that done, we could have a look at some, some things of our own. I could look at new things I could make to cook, but I would actually prefer to go for light armors. Now, the, one of the things with light armors is it unlocks quite a few other things. Medium armors, heavy armors, and shields as well. They are all super, super useful. So there we are. Uh, let's get you out of the way and pass through the rest of the night, I think. But uh, before we get down to that, let's go and see what we can make out of what we currently have. So, crafting-wise, we can now make light arms. We can't make anything. Oh, that's such a shame. I can use wood here. Six leather. Ah, uh, we lack enough to make a catalyst. So I, I do need that yarn. Quite a lot, actually. Either that or a, a good source of leather for the catalysts alone. Okay. Well, that's fine. Pass another turn. Three bigos in one go. Wow. Two bigos in one go. And we're just going to pass until dawn. There we are. Starting to become dawn. And with that, we're going to leave. Let's break camp. Start making our way out of here. But let's make our way out in such a direction as to... Uncover new things. Always good to find out more about the world. Um, sure. Okay, we're going to go right around. That's rough terrain, so we couldn't easily get onto it. A wolf layer just popped up. All right. Uh, right, we are going to need to go all the way around. We uncovered anything new? A little bit here and there. We'll be able to drop in on Theodore, though. Theodore welcomes you. Well, hello there. I see you're finding your feet and making first steps into the world. Well done. Right. 
We got the gold for you. Oh, good. You got the gold. That wretched woman owes me. Why did you call her a man before? Speak to her. Anyway, it's a matter of principles rather than the gold itself, so just keep it. Ah. You may need it to craft better stuff, you know. Well, I mean, okay, that that's that's fair. In social challenges, as you saw, you will face your opponent, but different skill sets become relevant, such as speech, attractiveness, and will. So just remember, different challenges use different skills. And so your party composition can have a great impact on the way you explore the world. As you perhaps noticed, you got research points as well as XP. You need research points to discover new materials and recipes for crafting and new buildings for your village. Right, so I get both experience and research knowledge by exploring and even killing stuff. Got it. Now, you will notice that some equipment as well as buildings in your village require a lot of stuff. Often things that are not easily gathered or commonly found. For such needs, I also recommend scouring the world map in search of old ruins, abandoned tunnels, ancient towers. You get the gist, Mithril right? mines? It so happens that I know of an old dungeon that you can explore and loot. I have marked this place on your map. Hooray! Thanks. So, rare materials are also found in the world, through both events and places of interest. Is there anything more that I can bring you? Well, yes. I have a second task for you to do at any time you're ready. Craft me ten cooked, baked or roasted food. Any type. You may want to research some varieties as well to match your supplies. Also, leave these ten crafted foods in the village until I show up. You don't have to rush with this one. Take your time and get to grips with managing your settlement. Remember to check the magical help button to read more. Yeah, I know. More about any mechanics. <laughs> Alright. Explore the dungeon and craft ten cooked, baked or roasted food. Till later then. We've already got that, actually. There we go. In fact, we just did that straight away. Okay, so the Ziodi are just to the north, and Theodore as well. That's actually really not too bad. Really, really not too bad at all. And we're going to be wanting to go that way. Oh, there's two hives there. Oh, no, a hive and a ruin. Because we want the elven wood. Hmm. Well, nothing more for us to do yes, tonight. Oh, wonderful. there we are. You made your first batch of prepared food. No longer are you a mere scavenger. Now you can cook. Hooray! Crafted foods are more efficient than the raw stuff, so you may want to take them when you're out exploring, as they are lighter to carry. So now I have a harder task for you. Build me a building in your village. Any building will do. Now, Good luck. This one is going to take us a while, but we got, wow, 17 Malachite. All right, then, one building to build. Off we go. That one is going to be harder. It's going to be a lot harder. We're going to have to gather some pretty specific materials for that. Okay, we have leveled up once again. Obsidian Mist, plus two intelligence, so nice. Russell is a little bit more willful. Izzy is a bit stronger. Svizzle is better at gathering. And Sara is more healthy. Oxhood is much more healthy. Uh, Rifsung is stronger. Uh, Maneuver and Arjna is more willful. Kenneth is better at gathering. And Jason has learnt a little more about folklore. Excellent work, everyone. Truly. All right. Well, let's get ourselves over here. I think it's high time that we consolidate our supplies. Let's rejoin Dapadel. Now, Dapadel, no. And also, no. Also, no. Good. Let's have a look at what we're going to make, shall we? We've got a lot of new options available. To Ooh, we can make some crafting tools. Oh, we don't need to, though. I don't think crafting tools are necessary at all. Right then, so, we're already making vegetables and meat. Let's try to make things that we can make out of vegetables first. So, uh, this, greens, thrown in a boiling pot with lots of seasoning. Not gourmet, but tasty, cooked greens. Very well, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's take this off, um, infinite, I would say. Well, maybe we could keep it on there. Let's have a look at my inventory. How much food we got? Got a decent amount of bigos, actually. Maybe we will change that. Um, pop you down there. I would like however many you can make of this. Sure, that'll do. 
Then after that, I would like vegetables and fruit. We will make some lexo. A good lexo made of any veggie you have on hand, but best with peppers. Hello. We'll make as much of that as we can. 15 of those to be exact. In fact, we'll move it up. Uh, actually, we, I meant to only move it up by one, but uh, that'll do. All right. Uh, Obsidian Mist, you can get in there. And for a turn or two, I'm just going to have people help out where they can. You can get in there. Izzy. Hmm. Actually, let's swap you guys around. This one's going to be the, the harder one to gather. Because it requires 99 there. Uh, I'll have... Izzy can help out here. Actually, no. We'll swap you around like that. That should do. Uh, well, no, once again, if I do this, then... Hmm. Yep. We're getting one of each of these every turn. That's not bad. It takes a little bit of organizing, but it's really not bad. Right then. Oxford, you get yourself a weapon, mate. Now, what type of weapons you want? I think we're going to go with a hammer. Seems dwarvish. Can you wield... No, you have to wield even a sword in both hands. Very well. Uh, no, that is, that is pretty solid work there. Very, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at what we can make. Now, I could craft some tools if I really wanted to. I could even make it out of this if I particularly wanted to. That would give me a crafting skill of three. I'm going to say no to that. It's also reasonably heavy, no matter what we do. Uh, let's have a look at the armors. We can now make one light armor. We use this as the catalyst, then we can make it out of something a little bit better. We'd have to have six leathers or eight yarn. So we'll go with leather. And then down here, we've got a lot of options. Some wood, for example, we could make it out of wood. We could use Malachite. We get seven armor, one dexterity out of making a smith's apron. Or we could make a quilted cloth, just six armor. Uh, but at that point, we could use this. 7 armor, 1 dexterity, quilted cloth. Or 8 armor, 2 dexterity to make a smith's apron here. Good for smithing, yes, but comes in handy when a beast tries to bite you as well. Uh, certainly wouldn't say no. We could use animal bones. Uh, 7 and 1. It's not awful. Just 6 there. We'll even use the wood here. Why would you use wood? Why? It makes no sense. I think that's probably one of the best ones we're going to get. That'll give us seven research. It'll weigh 76. It's not it's certainly not an easy one to do, but... Let's pop that one up to the top. And get you working on it. It'll take you three turns and then you'll drop down. Actually, no, you'll finish this one and then you'll start work on there. And that should be fine. Okay. Let's pass... A turn or two, then. There we are. Uh, we've made one of each of the foods. And we've gathered some resources. I'm going to pass enough turns to finish making the um, the piece of armor. Assuming nothing hits us, we should be good. Ooh. Not an easy place to there we go. But alas, grow up we must. One of your children has matured into a young adult and is ready to join your village and rebuild Thea. There we are. Now, initially you only have the options of warrior, gatherer, and crafter. But there are 13 options unavailable. Based on the buildings that you have, and sometimes even just the people in your your kind of in your colony, in your, your village, you can train them to be other things, like medics, witches, sages, so on and so forth, even scientists. Uh I'm gonna say I want an extra warrior, actually. Becoming an adult is an important rite of passage. The whole village celebrates this joyous occasion. The youngster places a food offering at the altars of their gods, in thanks and in hopes for a good future. 
They kill the mouse with their bare little hands. Looks like a promising warrior. We have got a new warrior in the colony. This is indeed a joyous day. Let us get in there and equip them. Now, unfortunately, I'm truly sorry about this one. Uh, we don't have much in the way of equipment to give you. That being said, actually, hmm, we do, as it happens. We have armor. You can have armor too. Well, we'll see first. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with this. That's actually a pretty solid weapon to give you straight off the bat. My lord. I could give you this, though, when we get you some extra shielding. Be a bit more tanky as a result. Mm, that wouldn't be... That wouldn't go amiss, because as, as I've pointed out, shielding regenerates frequently. But first, first and form, foremost, Casey has joined the colony. Now, let me have a think. Would this be better for you? No, it absolutely would not. But well, you get it. There we go. So you've got uh, 17 armor, 5 shielding. And you do a decent 18 damage. It's quite respectable. And you've even got a little bit of stealth. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome to the colony. Uh, let's actually get you helping out with some of the gathering work, though. Uh, you can help out mm, here. That'll do. Well, we've actually gotten quite a lot of items now, so we could look at making something else. I'm not sold on the idea of making armor, though. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't be able to. Hmm. So no to that, but we can make clothes. We can definitely make some clothes. Make silk. Silk tunic, three armor, very light. We go for four armor with the silk tunic. Or... That actually does look like a silk tunic at that point. Hmm. I can only make one of these, so I may as well make, make it out of the reptile leather. Very well. Let's get this made. That'll give us a nine research points if we can do it. Get you there, it'll take you three turns. If I put you there, it'll only take two, but I'm happy with the wait. We're going to pass just a few more turns, and then we are going to make our move and get back out there and start researching. Ooh. An unexpected visitor, Theodore, arrives at your village. Your food stocks have grown. Your people are learning how to live in the awakened fear once more. Hooray! But the darkness is not gone. Always looming in the shadows, lurking behind corners. It is time to try and find clues as to what happened and how to repair it. Okay, so how do we do that? Ah, that's the spirit. I knew we could count on you. I must warn you, others have tried and failed before you, so the road will not be easy. It's fine, we're awesome. We've got a dwarf. Do you know anything more about what happened to the cosmic tree or why the darkness came? I know some. But I do not hold the answers you need to seek. I know that once Thea was a land ruled by high magic. A land where demons were kept in check by the peoples. And by the cosmic balance upheld by the gods. The pillars of Thea stood sturdy and held our world together. Now the barriers between the lands of the living and those of the dead are torn asunder. And thus darkness holds a tight grip on us. Without your aid... Whatever made the sun return may not hold for long, and the Age of Darkness may descend upon us once again. All right, fine. So, how do we find out what to do? There have been those who sought to undo this curse, those who were charged with the guardianship of Thea's pillars, and who have failed us. Some were the ancient peoples you call elves. Some were avatars of your gods, and some just people who proved worthy. And yet, they all failed thus far. Here, on this map, I marked a spot where one such guardian may hold answers for you. Without giving you a chance to say anything more, Theodore disappears, leaving you with a map. Very well. Okay, we'll take the map, I guess. And one research point. I especially like the research points. Because we've now got a new point to, uh, of research. Hurrah! Hurrah, I say. Uh, okay, so we've unlocked the ability to make um, 
medium armor. We could go for shields next, however. In terms of buildings, we can only build the pasture. That's super useful because it gives you meat, depending on what you make it out of. The, the correct materials will give you a lot of meat, and uh, also a potential to, to attract certain types of animals, or, or, or uh, even... I don't think you can ever make it out of enough stuff to attract an elf or a dwarf, but there may be some other creatures you can attract. Herbalist hut, though, gives you herbs and also helps you in that children who grow up, if you have a herbalist hut, you can choose to make them medics. Super useful. Smithy, um, got well. It'll just give you random resources. It's good to get early. However, I strongly feel... But right now, we need to go for some other items around the map. We've got a, a location where we can get elven wood. That's great. We could build some buildings out of elven wood. Hmm. Wicker would be very good for making gathering tools. It's a tricky one. Let me just have a quick look at what we could build first. So first we've got uh, some equipment. And it's time for us to have a quick quick peek. See what we can do. Uh, no, that isn't as good. Definitely not as good as your stuff. Uh, so how, how about yours? No, you're fairly well equipped. All of you are quite well equipped, I must say. Uh, let's get you a bit of armor, since you do come out with us for a bit of a wander now and then. That bad quality, I'm going to replace that. And in fact, we're then going to break that down. I don't want weapons that are bad quality. So let's just go ahead. We Some resources may be recovered. Hopefully we'll get a decent return. It doesn't really matter too much to me, though. The main thing was getting that on one of our people. Now, in terms of construction, we can make the pasture as it stands. We could make it out of Elvenwood if we had enough. We don't have stone. And sandstone is not a particularly good quality. We can make it out of vegetables, certainly. Let's have a quick look at how this would affect things. So, with this, we'd add one piece of meat to our town per turn, and we'd have a, a human attractiveness of plus two. If, however, we used grain, ah, still only one. So really, we need that elven wood. At the very least, we need the elven wood because the wood is of such a low low tier that it's pulling everything down. But if we use grain, we'd have a much higher attract human quality. Now, one thing to be aware of this, be cautious about getting too much attract on humans. You, Your colonists will, will gradually get more children or that... So I think there's actually a lot of ways you can end up with more children. And they will always grow up to be humans. Uh, with one exception that I'm aware of. Uh, however, if you get a lot of human attraction, sure, you'll get like pre-leveled pre up like human warriors and stuff like that. But if you've got three human attraction and one dwarf attraction, and the event rolls by where the game decides, yeah, you've attracted someone... There's, you've only got one in, one in four chance that it's going to be a dwarf. Whereas if you kept your human attraction very, very low, then you've got a much better chance that it would be a dwarf, or a, an elf, or whatever you want. So bear that in mind. Having a high human attraction could work against you. I think we're going to hold out to get a better resource to make the pasture for. So odds are we're not going to get anywhere close to getting the herbalist hut, hut yet. So with that in mind... I would like to go for something that we could go for quartz, perhaps, some clay, maybe, or wicker, so that we'd have gathering tools. Tricky one. Spider silk would be nice. If we could get spider silk, then we could make some very light um, armor. If we got metals, then we'd be able to make some better uh, weapons. It's better leathers, for example. I think it's going to be wicker, though. If we had better gathering, we'd be able to get a lot more resources. So, sure. Wicker, and then eventually you can get all the way up to uh, whatever that is. I'm not actually sure 
what that one is. I think Nimblewood. Right, wicker. Really close by. Somewhere where I can get wood, wicker, and food. Oh, that's fantastic. And if I just happen to have a lot of food already, I could just sit there and gather loads of wood and wicker. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That worked out well for us. Worked out very well, actually. Okay, let's uh, head back, check out on what we're crafting. Well done, working our way through. Only two more turns and we've got all of that done. Uh, right now, we're basically eating all of this and I'm gonna let you eat the grain. Right now, anyone in the in the village gets one shielding automatically and plus one dexterity. So you, everyone over in the tactics deck is gonna have one stealth no matter what. Uh, that's actually really, really good. Uh, getting up to here is fantastic. As you can tell, this makes you very, very potent in a social battle. Getting down here, very potent in any kind of battle. And for, generally speaking, I feel that if you can't hit five different types of food, and there's not as much point in doing it for an expedition, but if you can, that's great because you get an extra tile that you can walk. Getting 10 different types of food, really hard, really stupidly hard. Um, so I don't think it makes much sense to have any for that. All right, we can use wicker there. I could use stone. Um, and leather. They would only give us a gathering bonus of three, but... Or I could go for this. Uh, gathering bonus of three, honestly, that's, that's not, not much worse. Um, yeah, it means well. Uh, so one extra gathering tool. Let's get that made, please, and indeed, thank you. Yep, head up there. It'll take us two turns. And then we're going to head out again. There we go. And once more. There we are. That's given us a, a little bit of extra intelligence. Uh, sorry, uh, research there, I should imagine. You're going to have one more turn. We're making three more uh, Lexo. And then we'll be done with all of that. And we'll start working on the cooked greens. Now, we've got off it. Well... Yeah, we've actually got quite a few cooked greens, so it's not a bad. Pro it's not a big problem for us. Okay, so with this gathering, I could give it to Izzy, and that, generally speaking, it is better to have someone, one person who's good enough to gather in, from an entire tile by themselves. And the reason for this, it, it might not be immediately obvious, but it comes back to the whole thing of you've got one person who's able to apply their full gathering power, and then four people who can help and only apply half of their gathering power. So it is much better to have that one person who can do the entire tile in one turn than to have to use two or three. Because you're, you're really sacrificing efficiency there in order to, to get that last last part. So that works out marvelously. All right. And if we, if we have a look here, we get one grain, one vegetable, two extra woods. So with that, I think it is time for us to head out. If we have a look at our log book... So open up the game log. Theodore's tutorial wants us to go and check out. Uh, oops, we're all the way down the wrong side. Uh, no, that's right. Part six. There we are. Uh, we've got to build one building. Okay, it's going to be a while. We are going to need some the uh, elven wood, I would say, for that. So let's prepare a new expedition. This one will be. Um, I was going to type elf haters, but I can't. The elves in this are so so much better than the elves in, in Dwarf Fortress. I'm just getting visions of the elves telling me off with cutting down wood, but they wouldn't. Uh, we'll go with... Um, tree choppers. Uh, Oxford is obviously going, although that is my greatest um, crafter. Also, my, my most deadly of warriors. Uh, Izzy's coming along. We'll take... Hmm. I'm going to take Rivsunk with us. And... Spizzle. Obsidian Mist. We'll take six and we'll leave six. Decent amount of gathering potential. Crafting potential is there. And two warriors to protect the town. I think that'll be more than enough. Now, we're going to have a fair way out for us, so I'm going to take along. Mm. Now, the way that this works is you'll only eat a certain amount of food. Like, even though we're eating a mixture of foods, 
we're not eating more numerical value of food than we did before. So, for example, if I were to take 12 um, uh, Lexo, that's still only two food. If I bring 12 greens across, and that should go up to four food. There we are. And so on and so forth. Uh, so, in fact, can I type it? Oh, I can. That's so much better. Uh, we are going to change this. Cancel. I want 30. 30 over here. Same 30. And we are, it gives us 18 turns. We don't need even remotely that. Uh, I only need 10 wood, if that. Maybe even just 5, realistically speaking. There we go. 5 wood gives us enough turns to get out there. That is more than enough for everything that we're going to be doing. Okay, I think our expedition it is ready to move out. All right then, you lot. Which way are we going to go? Up over the mountains, maybe? Yeah, let's get to this mountain because we'll see a little bit more. We've got a spider's nest just down there. I don't mind the wolf layer, honestly, because if they send the wolves out, we're just going to kill them. Uh, it'll give us a little bit of points, but we don't. what we don't want is the wolf layer leveling up. That would be the dangerous part. We could camp up here, but there's literally no point. Got a few spiders over there, I think. How many spiders? Four malicious spiders. They're not that dangerous. Okay, let's uh, pass the turn and see how this plays out. Okay, you've got enough points to get up there and take them out. I would rather you get the drop on them because then we can choose what to do. You approach the beast and you have time to decide your plan of action. Best way to slay beast is eye to eye attack. Uh, attack or hunt. We're going to hunt because why risk it? Why risk a frontal attack when we have good hunters with us? You stake out the animals and prepare the traps for the hunt. There we go. I don't believe the spiders have particularly strong hunting abilities. Uh, oh, actually, no. We don't actually fight the hunters. We fight the concept of hunting. So that's fine. Uh, let's get you in there. They'll be able to do damage to your um, shielding, but it won't really make much of a difference. Uh, I could just get you guys in there. Sure. Whoever is the attacks is going to go down. And you're confused. And then I'll just have the rest of my gather. Even my dwarf is good in hunting. My lord. Craziness. There we go. And that is the perfect one to have attacked. We win this without a single injury as a result. There we are. And from that we get some spiders. Ooh, we got a leather shirt. Too armor. We could maybe get some leather and amber out of it. But uh, generally I find it better to gather items back at your your village. If you're going to disassemble it, take it back to the village to do it. I think you get a better return. Uh, I can't promise that, but I do believe that to be the case. Here we are, just an increase. It's not too bad. And the, the point of experience. Now, this game can be played in multiplayer. It was never designed for it, however. Dia 2 is being designed from the ground up to support it, but Dia 1, you can play it in multiplayer, but one of the big things that I often found is that eventually one of you would fall behind and not be able to t take on the sorts of fights that were happening in, in, quite as confidently. Or one would just be able to do it from the beginning because they got some good luck, maybe because they found a dwarf. That person will advance so quickly compared to the other person because they'll just be constantly getting points of research from attacking things. All right, let's take out the spider's nest. And once again, we're just going to go in for another hunt. There is no reason to do anything else. And we'll get a little bit of spider silk from it. There we are. Uh, once again, we're, we're going to have to go for this. Uh, there we go. And you can join in. Pretty much exactly the same. Oh. Aren't you a clever one? Still, we will win. But interesting, interesting uh, attack that time. Trying to shield this ally so that they'll survive through the first round. They won't, but... Go. And on the second phase, we'll just wipe them out. Excellent. Oh my lord, that's good. A battle slingshot, which is basically a crossbow. It's crude and ugly, but it's almost shoot straight, and you can always hit someone with it. 
just whether that someone is the person you are aiming for. Seven ranged damage is fantastic. Let's give that to Izzy right away. Uh, Izzy currently has... Uh, no, no, this, this is a better weapon. You go ahead. Right, I'm going to give this to our dwarf then. Ranged um, damage, if you're on the tactics deck, you can use ranged damage to support an ally to increase the amount of damage they can do. So you could sort of conceptualize it as uh, you aiming for the, the person that one of your ally is sizing up ready to attack, just to add a little bit of extra damage. Right, so that has been cleared out. Now over here, we can get a little bit of wood, and get a little bit of uh, food. We may be able to get a slight bit more on that side as well. Mm. You know what we're going to do is we're going to set up camp right here if we can. Have we got the ability to do that? Oh, I've got to turn that off. My bad. Uh, yes, we do. So we're going to hunker down just for the moment. Grab some extra, extra wood while we're here. And some extra food as well. Since we can, and we'll end up with an extra six turns there for the uh, the stay over here while we're gathering the elven wood. Because elven wood, the higher the quality of the material, the more effort is required to gather it. A lot more effort. Production has stopped. Hmm. Let me quickly go and check on that. Oh, it's because no one is crafting. That will do it, yes. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, I will set up. Bigos to be made following that, and we'll go ahead and make 46 of them, apparently. Sure. We'll be limited by meat, and not long after that, by wood as well, but that's that's fine for now. But that's going to be where we wrap up this second episode. I am really, really hoping that you're enjoying this series as much as I am enjoying playing it for you, and I will see you in the next episode, but until then, and as always, do take care, everyone.